Now let's consider one unusual period in Smith's life, namely the time he spent working for the Custom House. This ranged from 1778 to 1790, a full 12 years, and he was paid 600 British pounds per annum, which was a good deal of money back then. Interestingly, Smith's own father, who died before Smith had born, but he too had been for a while a customs controller. In the late 18th century, customs duties were extremely important. In terms of supporting the functions of government, back then they amounted to almost one quarter of total British revenue for the state. Also, you can think of the customs duties as, in a sense, driving mercantilist policy, and thus Smith was, in the words of Anderson, Shugart, and Tollison, in practice an agent of English mercantilism. This really is strange, and it does not fit with our usual picture of Smith. What we know from the records of the Custom House is that it seems Smith worked really quite hard as a routine regulator, and that within the Custom House he did not work as a reformer. Again, to quote Anderson, Shugart, and Tollison, they wrote that, quote, Smith was a proud tax collector with little evident concern for the costs of such taxation to the economy. During his time working for the Custom House, Smith, even in his role as bureaucrat, called for the automatic warehousing of all imports, and this would have in practice made mercantilist policies even tougher. Yet Smith the scholar and Smith the political activist played a different role. During this very same time period, he wrote a bunch of letters to legislators calling essentially for free trade and the end to many customs duties. I don't really have a way of reconciling these different sides of Smith for you. One way to think of it is that perhaps he simply viewed his writing and what he favored as something quite separate from a job he was hired to do. It's also noteworthy that Smith undertook a major revision of Wealth of Nations while working at the Custom House, but it's far from obvious that his Custom House experience changed his attitudes on mercantilism very much one way or the other. Perhaps the puzzle simply will remain. But to read more on all of this, there's a very good piece by Anderson, Shugart, and Tollison. It's through JSTOR, and it's called Adam Smith in the Custom House. See also Ian Ross's biography, Life of Adam Smith, Chapter 20.